We are now in that typical aftermath period of the latest MCU movie, Spider-Man Far From Home in this case, during which fans are constantly picking the movie apart, looking for clues, plot holes, and easter eggs, and coming up with theories about it. Now, in spite of the fact that the movie's villain, Mysterio, appeared to perish at the movie's climax, one of those theories is that he's still alive, because his plan all along was to fake his own demise. In this video, we'll be taking a thorough look at this theory, and we think there's enough evidence to suggest you'll definitely be convinced by this one. So did Jake Gyllenhaal's Mysterio really lose his life at the end of Spider-Man Far From Home? Or was it all nothing more than an elaborate hoax to fool the world? Mysterio is a classic Spider-Man villain from the comics, and Gyllenhaal's version in Spider-Man Far From Home was every bit as much of a match for the webbed wonder as his comic book counterpart is, maybe even more so. That was a welcome surprise, because a number of fans had been worried for years that Mysterio would be difficult to portray as a convincing villain in live action. The MCU depiction of the character, whose real name is Quentin Beck, just like in the source material, was presented as a scientific genius who used to work for Tony Stark's Stark Industries, and even created the barf technology that was shown in Captain America Civil War, which most people had assumed was created solely by Stark himself. Given the adulation shown for Tony Stark, in spite of what Beck considered to be a lack of real interest in science on the hero's part, Beck had become bitter and twisted, having come to the conclusion that he was living in an age in which real scientists never get the acclaim and respect they deserve. As a result, he recruited his own team of geniuses to surround himself with, established the fake identity of Mysterio, and used a series of drones and holograms to create monstrous elemental threats that he could defeat on a public stage, as a way of earning the same adulation Tony Stark had earned in his life as a superhero and key member of the Avengers. But there was more to his villainous plan than that. That was merely the first step. He went on to successfully manipulate Peter Parker into handing over more Stark tech. Parker gave him Edith, the pair of high-tech glasses that granted him remote access to everything Stark had ever built, and which allowed the illusionist to put on an even greater performance in London. It was an Avengers-level performance, as he would describe it. What Mysterio didn't bank on, however, was Spider-Man uncovering the truth and attempting to expose him, but that's exactly what happened. And it led to one of the most stunning and spectacular fight scenes in the 11-year history of the MCU. It literally felt as if the great John Romita Sr.'s comic book artwork had come to life on the big screen. That climactic battle saw the webbed wonder rise like a phoenix from the ashes, having been previously taken out of commission when Mysterio's illusions resulted in him being smashed into by a fast-moving train. Peter followed Mysterio to London and confronted him by putting his uh, Peter Tingle to the test in the midst of a massive illusion. That's his uh, spider sense to you, me, and pretty much everyone who isn't his Aunt May or Happy Hope. And in the end, Jake Gyllenhaal's evildoer took his last breath. Or did he? That is the question we're answering here. Mysterio had been using his newly massive supply of Stark drones to create a huge illusion, one far bigger than he and his team had ever created before. It came in the form of a single monstrous elemental being that was designed as a combined version of the four elementals he'd previously faked. It had wind, water, earth, and fire properties, and towered over the River Thames. But Spider-Man obviously knew that the elemental was a mere illusion, prompting him to venture inside its holographic center. At that point, he began destroying all the drones that were projecting the illusion, resulting in the giant image falling apart before the eyes of everyone watching. It forced Mysterio to change his tactics. He had no choice in the matter. He gave up on the hologram and simply unleashed the drones to focus solely on taking Spidey down. The confrontation came to its conclusion in a confined space, which seemed to suit the hero far more than it did the villain. But Mysterio once again attempted to use his illusions to create a twisted reality that would disorientate Spider-Man and allow him to defeat the hero once and for all. However, he didn't take into account that darned Peter Tingle which enabled Spidey to differentiate between what was real and what wasn't. The villain's final roll of his evil dice was to use a fake version of himself to distract Spidey while the real Mysterio attempted a sneak attack with a gun. But Peter instinctively avoided the bullet, which ricocheted back and ended the life of his tormentor. But Peter instinctively avoided the bullet. It seemed like a fitting end to the movie. Spidey unleashed a finessed version of one of his most iconic powers, while the Master of Illusion lost his life because of his own attempts at trickery. But Mysterio's demise could still have been an elaborate hoax. He is an illusionist, after all, and the entire theme of Spider-Man Far From Home was basically that you should never believe your eyes. The people behind the movie were obviously 
obviously aware that viewers might have assumed Mysterio's demise wasn't real, so they added an important line of dialogue in which Peter desperately asked Edith if it was genuine or not. Edith assured him that it was, and in the same way Peter did, audiences were expected to believe Mysterio really was a goner. But there's a very simple reason that may not be the case. If any magician or illusionist wants to pull off a good trick, they really need two things. The first being a good sense of the observational skills of the people they're trying to fool, and the second being complete control of the environment they're in at the time. In this scenario, Mysterio had both. He knew exactly what kind of scanners and analytical systems Edith had. He and his team were the people who designed them after all. And it's far from impossible to believe that he could figure out a way to fool the device or rig it to lie on his behalf. Moreover, he's the one who ultimately chose the environment where that final fight occurred. Even if it did seem to favor Spider-Man, yet a deflected bullet caused by said environment ended up killing him. It all looks extremely suspect, given how intricate and fault-free his villainous planning had been up until that point. This particular argument is supported by the fact that Mysterio already seemed to have moved to a fallback plan. He'd actively chosen to drop the holograms around his drones, which revealed their true nature to the world, then engaged Spider-Man in one-on-one -on -one combat. It's not too far-fetched, therefore, to assume it was part of a contingency in which he blamed Spider-Man for the drones, then portrayed himself as the hero. A plan that could have, in theory, included faking his own passing to the other side. The fake demise scenario actually fits surprisingly well if you think about it. Spider-Man Far From Home's final scenes show Mysterio's crew packing up and moving on, with one of them even pulling out a disk drive, presumably containing manipulated recordings of Peter Parker for the contingency, but those scenes didn't devote any time to showing their emotions. There is literally zero hint of any grief or loss, and that's pretty important as far as this theory is concerned. Why weren't they sad if a guy they worked alongside and clearly liked was no longer alive? The next part of the plan is executed in the mid-credits scene, which is quite a lot longer than most credit scenes in the MCU. In the extended scene, Spider-Man could be seen watching a big screen in horror in a New York street. It was manipulated footage that portrayed Mysterio as a hero while portraying the heroic web-slinger as a bad guy. And more to the point, it didn't only ruin his reputation, it also exposed his secret identity of Peter Parker to the world. It was clearly meant to suggest that Mysterio's allies had gotten their revenge, enacting Quentin Beck's contingency plan to ruin Spider-Man, and indeed Peter Parker. But perhaps the most interesting thing about the recording was that it spent just as much time portraying Mysterio as a hero as it did claiming that Spider-Man was a villain. In fact, it did such a good job of it that the Daily Bugle's J. Jonah Jameson, played by the iconic J.K. Simmons no less, actually went as far as declaring that Mysterio is the greatest hero of all time. That is exactly the way Quentin Beck himself would have wanted to hear himself be described if he were still alive, and rather pertinently prior to his final battle with Spider-Man, Beck had said, they'll see exactly what I want them to. After Spider-Man was named and framed, all Mysterio would need to do is sit back in the shadows and enjoy his work for a while before making a dramatic and celebrated return to the world of superheroism. He could claim to have been mysteriously resurrected, perhaps suggesting that the people from his world have some kind of regenerative healing abilities or are harder to kill due to having a different physiology or simply spin a story about how he was never actually deceased to begin with. To put it simply, as far as Beck was concerned, the finer details wouldn't really make a difference, as long as he'd successfully manipulated the world into believing Spider-Man was a bad guy using his uncanny ability to fool people, Beck could continue his lie. As far as what Spider-Man Far From Home wants us all to believe is concerned, Mysterio really is gone for good. The response Edith gave to Peter Parker when he asked the question was specifically intended to reassure viewers that this time what they were seeing was not an illusion. But that doesn't really need to be the case. As a matter of fact, it would be incredibly easy for Marvel Studios to reveal that Edith was unreliable or that Mysterio had rigged the technology to lie to Peter, thus setting the villain up to return more dangerous than ever. And you know what? That would be a really fun and interesting twist. And more importantly, a welcome one, because Jake Gyllenhaal was fantastic in the role. Importantly, it would also give Peter an opportunity to get his good reputation back and expose Mysterio as the real bad guy in this scenario. And he might even be able to convince the world that the secret identity Mysterio revealed to the world was actually a lie. And what could be extremely fun is if Mysterio ends up joining the MCU version of the Sinister Six. He is an incredibly popular character, so why not give the evil team a flagship character to lead them? Having the likes of Craven the Hunter, Shocker, Dr. Octopus, and the Hobgoblin operate
operating behind Mysterio's illusions would give Spider-Man the most difficult challenge of his life, and it would be really cool to see that depicted in live action on the big screen. In fact, Mysterio would be an incredibly useful character to have around going forward in general in the MCU. Anything fans don't like in Spider-Man movies could be brushed aside, retconned, and passed off as an illusion. How incredibly convenient. Would Marvel Studios really want to permanently dispose of a character who could offer them that option? So yeah, we really believe this theory could turn out to be true, and we'd be genuinely happy if it does. Mysterio was really cool. Marvel Studios have been doing a lot right when it comes to their villainous characters lately, and it would be great if more of them lasted for more than just a single movie. Here's hoping it comes to fruition in the next Spider-Man movie, whenever that may be. So what do you think? Was Mysterio's plan to fake his own demise all along? Do you think he'll return in the MCU? Let us know your thoughts in the comment section below. And don't forget to like, share, and subscribe to Screen Rant for more great videos like this one. Come back soon, guys.